Yo, what's on? Hello, everybody. Hope that you're all well and welcome to this bit of an analysis that we have today. Basically, saw we're breaking up here on Bitcoin and thought, hey, let's go live for a bit and talk you through this. Uh, obviously, we are back now above that point of control. We're above the CC. Um, so, yeah, that's obviously considered pretty bullish, no? Uh, if we come down here on a lower term time frames. Oh, my, what's happened to this template? There we go. Uh, we can see here on the 30 minute chart, the volume is awfully low. So the volume at the moment is really, really, really low. So it's not that, ex it's not that like, I wouldn't be longing this breakout, let's just say that. But we are above the level, obviously. But I still wouldn't long this. Why? Because the volume is really low. 45 million coming in at the moment. Obviously, we kind of want to see what how it do, how it fares after taking the highs. No, um, that's that's the most important thing. It doesn't have to come in here before the highs, but you want to see it coming in above the high at the very least, because at the moment it's not there. So that's the first thing I'd bear in mind. Volume is pretty low, but that's to be expected on the weekend. Okay. That's the first thing. I, I haven't actually been um, trading very much today, so or actually at all. So this is the first time I'm really looking at it. Yeah, holding support pretty well. Bit of an upward sloping channel going on with support held each time. The only thing that we really lack is volume. But then it's the weekend, so you don't always get it. Uh, what we could see is if this does push to the upside, we'd have nice confluence around this channel high with that 61k zone. Yeah. Nice to break $60,000, I think, this weekend. So obviously with Bitcoin pushing upwards, the altcoins are not going to generally fare as well. And we can see that across the board, red altcoins, all of them, some a bit more red than others. But that is also to be expected when Bitcoin pushes up, the altcoins do not do as well. Uh, as I said before, I'm not going to short this because of the fact we had already tested this. This was actually the, now the sixth time of testing this level. And obviously, the more times we test it, the weaker it gets. We tested it once, twice, three times, four times, five times. This here is the sixth time of testing the level. So, yeah, that's why I'm personally not going to short it this time. It's like six times of testing it. There's only, there's only so much times you really want to short that. Breakout traders can try and take over, I suppose, to see if they want to push it up. There we go. We've taken the high. <laughs> Volume is still ultra low. The volume is still really low, but uh, obviously I was trying to trying to break this high. But the, the problem is when you try and do it on such low volume, the thing is it's the weekend. So it's also, it's not like a requirement that you have to see high volume, but it's just always prefer preferable. You know, starting to come in a little bit nowadays. I personally wouldn't long the breakout, but nice open interest increases, nice volume increases. Well, relatively speaking, so at least it's open interest increases. <laughs> the volume is still obviously low there. Oh no. Um, 
boo. Kind of need to take that, but I'm going to have to not right now. Oh, no, back. Um, yeah. Well, here we go. We're getting the break to the upside. Most if we hold this, we've obviously got our 60k as our next level. Pretty obvious. But the best level is going to be back at around $61,000. So I think you've got the intermediate resistance, obviously, psychological 60k. And then obviously you've got your next level above you at basically $61,000. For me personally, there's no trade because I, I don't trade breakouts. So I would just not, there's not a short here because we're getting volume, you know, we're getting open interest increases. We're taking the high. We've take, challenged this high six times. For me, that just means there's no short. Um, and also I don't trade breakouts, so there's no long. So basically I'm just, there's just no trade for me. And that's fine. <clears throat> so we'll see how this goes Let's see if there's any comments that are interesting oh yeah well, the old coins are obviously uh, uh, yeah, Ethereum looks a lot better Yeah, obviously ETH BTC moving up at the same time. I still, I'm still bullish on ETH. I'm still bullish on ETH. So I think ETH is, uh, yeah, I'm long on ETH and I'm bullish on ETH. So obviously it needs to try and break this local downtrend that it's in as well. You can really look at it a bit like this. Series of lower highs. Uh, EOS, I'm still bullish on. Personally, obviously, I would like to see $9 now, really. But I'm still bullish on EOS, absolutely. This, for me, is uh, just another opportunity to buy. So I'm, I'm bullish still on EOS. I'm bullish still on Ethereum. I'm bullish still on Litecoin. I'm still bullish on my altcoins. They're just obviously pulling back. Which is to be expected. You have to remember, like, EOS moved up in the course of a day, like, you know, in the course of two days, it moved up 100%. So pulling back is obviously normal. Uh, you have to remember the, the coins like Litecoin, similar. Uh, you know, in the course of a few days, it moved up, you know, 40% in three days. So, of course, these pullbacks are... These are the times you buy the pullbacks. You like don't buy up at the top of the move. Do you, you want to see the pullback to get involved? Because if there's no pullback, then it's very hard to get in. So, you know, you have to think that these pullbacks are opportunities. Or well, that's what I think anyway. Um, you know, this is why you don't long breakouts. Because, you know, it's just imagine that you would try to long this breakout and you're straight away underwater. It's um, This is really basically why I just don't long breakouts. Because I just don't see the point in it. So yeah, you've you've basically come back above the high, pull back though on declining open interest. So you can still continue this up. But you have to remember we're still making higher highs and higher lows here. But um, yeah, that's basically somebody somebody comments saying why don't you long breakout? Why don't you long the breakout? This is kind of why. I'm just not a breakout trader, you know. Uh, this guy says, what do I think about EOS? I'm still bullish on EOS. Definitely. I like it. Um, <laughs> there's the legend himself, Eunice. Maybe Eunice will share an Elliot wave count with us if he's feeling very kind. <laughs> yeah tesla to be honest with you all like all of the altcoins that i'm in i'm still bullish on all these altcoins so th this somebody because somebody's just asking about basically every single altcoin. so tezos yeah i'm still bullish on tezos 
I'm really not bothered that we're pulling back today 3.5%. You know, for me, it's just I'm totally not phased about this this move down, okay? I'm like bullish on these for the medium term. So like 3% pullback for me is really not anything to worry about. Like this doesn't worry me. This for me actually just looks like an opportunity. So yeah, I'm, I can honestly honestly say I'm honestly just not worried about these pullbacks. And, and for me, they are just areas of um, buying. Yeah, so I'm bullish on the midterm on, on the altcoins. EOS, Litecoin, Tezos. Uh, Cardano, see Algo. Uh, what else am I in right now? I'm in so many altcoins that I, that'll link. Yeah, so I'm still bullish on all these altcoins, and yeah, I just want to emphasize one more time that the, these pullbacks, firstly, they 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 are somewhat expected. Yeah, some of them have moved up. EOS moved up 100% in two days. Litecoin 40% in two days. So to see the pullbacks on this is 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 okay firstly it's okay and it's actually expected when we see bitcoin breaking upwards so when we see bitcoin you know being volatile that also puts pressure on the if you know like the bitcoin pairs to move down oh yeah i'm still i'm still bullish on dot as well a dot's another one Nope, I would not short Doge. I'm not sure how many of you saw it, but I was trading Doge the other day on stream. You had to have been in the stream to have seen it, but we were, we were, well, I was anyway, I traded Doge on stream. Um, I wouldn't short Doge, no. I know that it's got an event tonight, no? I think they've got an event tonight. So I'd probably wait to see how this goes. Maybe it's by the, by the rumor Selva News event. Um, but you can never be too sure with that when it's Elon Musk involved. No, Do Doge is, well, I think Elon Musk is going on Saturday Night Live, and I'm pretty sure he's going to talk about Doge, so. So that, that that's why you might want to be careful shorting it. Well, you can take a gamble, obviously. You can take a gamble on it, <laughs> roll the dice, and see if it's, see what happens. And this is the thing, this volume is ultra low, yeah, the volume is just so low. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I think it looks good though to push up towards $60,000, don't think there's any reason not to think that at the moment. Would I be thinking that we'd get this? <laughs> yeah, so this is Doge. So the other day I was looking at doge of doing a move that went like this like first retracement up second retracement like rally um obviously we never took out the low back up hit all time high earlier today i think doge is just in a range for now if it breaks the range high then look up again for another rally but we've basically got this on doge Resistance of the midpoint, reclaimed, rally to the top of the range, resistance top of the range. So at the moment, it's just range bound. Obviously, if we break the high of the range, 
the thing is this is all time highs so we could just do something really simple like you know one 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 thousand six hundred sats next but yeah I, I was trading doge um literally I, I literally entered the position on stream and uh i'm i'm still holding that long so it was a long and I, i'm still holding it i was just like well, i'm just gonna hold it it will either hit my liquidation because it was like a times 20 long <laughs> so i was like right it's either going to hit my liquidation or it will go up and we obviously went up in the end so that was nice i'll show you my prediction from in the group because i did post this prediction in the group um oh coin chart only there you go so this is what i predicted and this was the outcome so this was posted on the sixth so literally two days ago i posted the prediction for doge that we would look for this move down uh one move up second move up and this is how it played out in the end one move up second move up obviously it retraced lower here than what i thought didn't think we would get such a heavy retracement but we never actually took out the low so absolutely fine and yeah i still hold the rest of that doge position actually right now but that was the prediction for doge that was the outcome for doge more or less pretty that was pretty good though for like a massive volatile asset that we're trading like doge is extremely volatile right now and so to to correctly correctly predict the first and then we'd get the second fake out of it. And it went literally almost as that is predicted because we did come a little bit lower here than I thought. But again, we never took the low, so never hit my liquidation. And we went for the, for the nice rally upwards. So that was obviously where we were back here. First move up, second move up. We're hitting the top of the range. If we can try and consolidate up here, then obviously we got another move to the upside coming really. And I think that's likely, knowing what's coming tonight on Doge. See Elon Musk bro, bro, do his magic. Oh, GG, anybody that bought the breakout. <laughs> you know, this is why you do not try and trade breakouts. They just really bad idea. Look at this. Anybody that bought the breakout of this high, instantly down nearly 1%. That's literally, that will have liquidated times 100 longs. So you see these people, 6.9 million, 8.6 million, 4.5 million, 4.5 million. This candle, 49 million. Yeah, this is increases of open interest. These are, let's just say they're times 100 long breakout traders. They have times 100 long breakout trade with millions and millions and millions of dollars. And they literally have just got liquidated. 100%, that's a liquidation move. So, you know, this is why you do not long the breakouts because they have literally just got liquidated. And I now imagine that we just push straight back up. So they literally got absolutely wrecked and liquidated buying the breakout only for it to liquidate them and then continue up. Like, how painful would that be? That must be very painful. Um, <laughs> that's why I don't long breakouts, basically. Because it's, it's not the best idea in the world. And the reason, the reason why we could have said with a high degree of certainty that it was, even if you were a breakout trader, why this was not a good time to long the breakout is really simply because the volume, relatively speaking, of course, we had you know 49 million on the breakout but when you look at the average of this range so the way you try and work it out is you look at the average of the range and 49 million well 23 million going into 49 million on the breakout candle was the lowest we've seen thus far so we can say in the you know in probabilistic um way of speaking it was very unlikely that this was going to get follow through of the breakout because the volume was just a lot lower than average Obviously, we do have to take in consideration it's a Saturday, but nevertheless, if the volume is that low, well, I wouldn't long wouldn't long that breakout even if I was a breakout trader, you know, because it's just it's just just not a good thing to try and do. So 
so yeah that's that's basically why you don't really do that I suppose there you go nearly one percent down uh somebody says is there a video on contenders explaining how to read this volume yes there is we got uh footprint chart videos to understand all this so the answer is yes we got all that in the contenders package mate Oof. Back to the point of control here. Somebody says, why isn't this on YouTube? I just felt like doing it on Twitch, <laughs> basically. I think Airbnb is bullish. I also think Coinbase is bullish right now. Let me just see if I can do something one second. I might put this section on YouTube actually and upload it as a video on YouTube. Um, yeah, I think I might do that. Let's see if it's possible. 